Big week ahead for the Texans. We got some joint practices. I got to catch up with all three coordinators, all three phases for the football hardos. Let's go inside the locker room. The week of joint practices in preseason game number two. Yeah, it's the locker room on YouTube. You know what it is. Let's get it. Hey. Locker room, yeah, we in the locker room. Texas talk, yeah, you know what we about to do. Localize every angle is what we really do. We the source, we the post of the city too. Landlock, got the game in the headlock. Localize every time, can't stop, won't stop. Yeah. Welcome to the locker room, number one source for Texans daily digital content. I'm Landry Larker. You can hear me Monday through Friday, 10 to 2 on Sports Radio 610 and the Odyssey app. That is the number one source for Texans radio entertainment. This right here is the number one source for Texans digital uh, entertainment. 11 months strong. Uh, It's been consistent. uh, And this is the place to come, whether you're a Texans fan or not, for the pulse of what's going on with the Texans. Got players, coaches, et cetera, weekly. We're at all of the games. We got you covered right here. So subscribe, like, ride along. Just get the pulse of... What's going on? Uh, Also have the uh, live streams, 9 p.m., pretty much daily. Post-game shows as well. Uh, Those are interactive, and and I always appreciate the interaction and appreciate you uh, for coming through. Also appreciate that the Miami Dolphins are going to be in town this week. There's going to be some joint practices. Many would say um, that those can be more valuable than actual preseason games because you can can communicate with the other coaching staffs. You can tell them, you know, what you're looking for. Uh, what you want to see. And this weekend, following the Texans' first preseason game, uh, was able to catch up uh, with a couple of the coordinators um, and got to ask them some of the questions that maybe you would like to know about these joint practices. And I started with the most important guy, one of the most important guys in the building, uh, Bobby Slowick, who a couple of things about Bobby Slowick. It's very clear he loves C.J. Stroud. Um, I actually wonder how much did Bobby Slowick have to do with the sales pitch of getting both Will Anderson and C.J. Stroud? Because the way that he talks about C.J. Stroud, you can tell he really has strong admiration for him. And Bobby Slowick comes from that pipeline. He comes from the Kyle Shanahan pipeline. He comes from the same place that Mike McDaniel comes from. You can even connect Sean McVay there. We don't know what Bobby Slowick's offense is going to look like. Um, Early takeaways just from being at practice, there's a lot more motion. Uh, There's a quick screen game. There's still a willingness to throw the ball deep. Uh, I think they want to get the running backs more involved. Uh, He does sound the part. He sounds like he knows what the hell he's doing. And this might sound weird to a lot of people, but he actually sounds a lot like Mike McDaniel. Uh, who was with Kyle Shanahan longer than any other assistant, now the head coach the Miami Dolphins. He's coming to town. Now, I don't think Bobby Slow is going to be blowing fat clouds uh, on the sidelines uh, with vapes, although it'd be cooler if he did. Um, he's not going to give you the the sound clip, the, the goofiness and the hokiness, as I described it, that Mike McDaniel will give. But when they actually talk ball, and this has a lot to do with me being a nerd and watching uh, – press conferences but when they talk ball and they talk about playbooks they talk about putting players in certain positions these guys sound a lot alike now bobby doesn't have jalen waddle he doesn't have tyree kill uh we don't even know if he has tua yet so can't really judge them you know head to head statistically as much um but when they talk about players specifically putting players in position uh what a playbook is the minimizing of the playbook they sound identical um and and i encourage you to go just go go back and listen to a mike mcdaniel press conference and then listen to the way slowick talks they sound identical and i asked bobby about that and i called mcdaniel hokey he did not but this is what the offensive coordinator your houston texans one of the most important people in the building had to say uh, about my observation that he and mike mcdaniel surprisingly to some sound a lot alike Sound alike, not as hokey, but when you actually get into like, oh, like all that, it seems like y'all have the same philosophy. What was y'all's dynamic like, and what, 
what, was, what it might mean to you. Don't, don't tell Mike I said that. Don't tell him I told him he was hokey. You didn't hear that from me. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> no uh, I mean, me and Mike worked really closely together in 20, uh, 2019, 2020, 2021. Uh, we had a really close relationship. Honestly, I mean, we did a lot of things coordinators had to do to help Kyle because he had head coach responsibilities. So me and him working hand in hand in the run game and in the pass game, you know, when you go through stuff like that and season has ups and downs, you, you get really close to somebody. Um, so we, we've often talked football, life, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, we see football through a very similar lens a lot of times. Um, he's extremely, he's an extremely bright, creative individual. I mean, really, really smart, sees things that not everyone else can kind of see. Uh, and it, it was awesome for me to be around him and, and kind of soak some of that stuff in. They sound the exact same uh, when you hear them talk. And I do wonder, you know, that dynamic that, you know, you're serving Kyle Shanahan in a certain way and you're giving him, you know, your information. I wonder, you know, how slow it kind of passes that out. I, I, I like that they have Gerard Johnson here and you'd like to establish some sort of pipeline. Um, but the more you hear those guys talk, uh, the more similar they are. And it's going to be interesting to see how Bobby Slowick evolves as a play caller. I, he's still learning. Um, he's getting the logistics down, all that. He's figuring out what he's got to work with. But a couple of things. Number one, there's a lot more movement on the offense. And number two, the dude loves C.J. Stroud. <laughs> I mean, he loves C.J. Stroud, who, by the way, is still getting the first team reps. Um, so that's kind of where we're at there. Defensively is interesting, okay? Matt Burke seems to be calling the defense in practice. Now, this is something that I don't think a lot of people are observing. But And, and look, maybe this is just about um, letting him do it in practice. But there have been a couple of stretches, and I'm surprised more people haven't caught this, where he's kind of calling the defense. Maybe that's just Amico letting him do it, uh, figure it out. But Matt Burke, has he's been an analytics guy. He's been a defensive coordinator. Um, He's been in charge of challenges and clock management. So there's a lot of things that he does. It'll be interesting to see what that dynamic is. I think he might be a little bit more important of a resource than maybe we thought uh, when he was first brought in. Because you originally just thought, well, you know, this guy's a defensive coordinator and D'Amico's actually going to be calling the defense. So who gives a damn? Keep an eye on him. He could be a very good resource um, for D'Amico. And I think that's something that the Shanahan, like the good Shanahan disciples have done really well where they spread out responsibilities and they're able to maximize guys strengths even if it's not like traditional strength and those guys are able to kind of propel their careers uh you saw it with zach taylor you've seen it with kevin o'connell uh mike mcdaniel like these guys these guys learn a lot here and i think D'Amico could be creating something like that but i asked matt burke uh with Joint practice is coming up and starting later this week. Uh, what about the communication uh, with Miami coaches before joint practices? Do you like hit up Mike McDaniel and say, hey, our defense is struggling here. We want to get this work in. Does Mike McDaniel say, hey, you know, I want you to really press this receiver. How does that work? Uh, I asked Matt Burke about that over the weekend. Nice. Uh, we, yeah, I mean, just not necessarily like super specific, but usually there's just some sort of like, hey, in these periods, what are we trying to work on? And there's some collaboration. Um, we haven't actually got together with those guys uh, yet um, in terms of going down that road. But a lot of times it's more just like, all right, hey, what are we trying to do in this period? Or, hey, can you give me some of this? Or what do you guys want to see? And, and not that you're like scripting it up, but just like, hey, in the course of practice, can you hit on these three or four things so we can see that? And. Um, so it's usually, again, it's everywhere I've been, and obviously with, with Mike and uh, D'Amico's relationship, like it's going to be pretty, pretty collaborative, be great work for us, I think. All right, there you go. Um, and and I, I fully anticipate that. Could be the best work that they get uh, all off season. Got to pour one out for a buddy of ours, friend of the show, Frank Ross, one of the best special teams coaches statistically in the NFL, one of the best special teams units last year, but – Frank Ross, tough offseason for him. We basically had the death of a kickoff where 
you, you, you call for the fair catch and you get the ball right there at the 25. It hurt Frank Ross when we first talked to him about it. I thought he was going to cry. Um, now that the uh, sympathetic phase has left us, I decided to kind of give him a hard time about it. This was Frank Ross, uh, <laughs> the man, uh, talking about the death of the kickoff, as well as if you tell guys like Steven Sims or whoever to maybe take out kicks out of the end zone that they wouldn't normally take in a regular season game. Here's me giving Frank Ross a little bit of a hard time. How you doing? What's up, man? How you guys doing? How are you handling the death of the kickoff? Is it still hitting close to home? No, we're okay. We're okay. Play within the rules. I wish the game wouldn't change, you know. Um, I know that most teams are going to continue to be aggressive, especially people that have weapons back there. I mean, I think just kind of perifed the TV, but I think I saw a couple of uh, returns for touchdowns in the league today. I don't know what they were before practice here, but, um, you know, the chance to change the game, you still want that. So hopefully if we're covering, it's, you know, we got a chance to make a play and show our physical toughness. If we're returning, same thing, want to be able to make a play, get that ball past the 25 and anything extra starts the offense in a better spot. Is that coach different in the preseason where someone's getting a chance uh, to, like Sims, getting a chance to show what he can do in kickoff? Is it, hey, it's 10 yards deep in a regular season game, maybe take yeah. a knee, but in this situation, take it out a little bit? Definitely with the with the preseason, there, look, everything's got to be evaluated. We need to know who can single block in the front line down the core. We need to see who can sustain on the cover on the cover side. You need to see who can win, avoid, and defeat. And then the returners, you know, we want those guys trying to make plays. You know, so um, had a couple miss hits in the last uh, in preseason one where we couldn't really field the ball clean, or you had to bring it out from a few yards deep. Um, et cetera. You know, we had a kickoff with 12 seconds and a half, so we're hitting a, a type of squib possible to run clock in that situation there. Um, so, yeah, there's a little bit more freedom relative to or aggressiveness relative to how we would play certain kicks in a regular season. Um, but, you know, if a guy like Sims back there, obviously a chance to make a, make a play, and he's a good playmaker, we want to get the ball in his hands. All right, there you go. Frank Ross. Got to love Frank Ross. You got you to love Frank Ross. Got to love this coaching staff. Um, TBD on what the production is going to be but i think when it when it comes to the coaching staffs and it always it's always kind of funny when you talk about the texans especially since this channel's been on like you compare things to well it's not as bad as last year right like you hire lovey smith you're like well at least he's not david coley except maybe he was worse you it, it's kind of tough because you say well yeah this coaching staff's more intriguing than you know bill o'brien going and getting an assistant college coach um John Perry and letting him coach wide receivers or, you know, having Tim Kelly follow him around for eight years and, and, and all that. Um, and, and Lovey Smith's coaching staff and David Cully's, but these guys, this seems like a coaching staff that could potentially be really good. Frank Ross is already really good at his job. Bobby Slowick, it, it, he was next in line. Someone was going to give him this opportunity. So usually when you say, you know, this is the most intriguing or this is the best that they've had in this amount of time, it's kind of like, well, no kidding. Uh, look at what they've had. But there is some reason to be at the very le least intrigued about this coaching staff and a uh, big week for them, big opportunity with Miami coming into town. Uh, going to be fans in the stands at the joint practices, going to be fans in the stands on Saturday. We're going to get a little home action. Game was supposed to be at seven. They moved it up to three for national TV. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. No matter how it does go, uh, Subscribe, like, ride along. And when it comes to this text and stuff, we are all in this together. Appreciate you for coming through. It's going to be a fun week. The season is approaching. Hope you enjoyed getting to hear um, yours truly with the coaches that oversee all three phases. Have a good one. You know what we about to do. Localize it. It is what we really do. We the source. We the posts of the city too. Landlock. Got the game in the headlock. Localize every time. Can't stop. Won't stop. Yeah. We top two and we not too. Plugged in daily.